How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about the things that I do not like about Star Wars Battlefront 2. So these are a few things that I don't like about the game. I absolutely love the game regardless of these things but these are a few things that really bug me about the game. But if you are new to the channel make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button as it's the first video of 2018 that I'll be uploading and it's already two weeks into the year. So that is a great start. But yeah guys, I really hope you do enjoy the video and I'll be bringing a lot more for this year. So anyway, without further ado, without me rambling on anymore, hopefully you do enjoy the video and let's begin with the things that I don't like about the game. So in Battlefront 2, there are two main game modes, the first being Galactic Assault, which is the ground battle, which consists of destroying or capturing an objective with a 20 versus 20 team, and usually lasts for three or four phases. The second main game mode is Starfighter Assault, which is the space version of a Galactic Assault, which consists of destroying or defending an objective, usually lasting around three to four phases, which is a 12 versus 12 player game mode. Moving away from the main game modes, there is Heroes vs Villain, a 4v4 light vs dark side hero game mode. Strike, which is a small 16 player game mode, which involves destroying or capturing two objectives with a player limit, similar to Galactic Assault, while the other team has to defend. And finally, there is Blast, which is basically a 10 vs 10 team deathmatch with a 100 player limit to each team. The main problem I have with the game modes is that there isn't many of them, and because there isn't many of them, they will get boring quite quickly. As a result of this boredom, people will begin to not play the game, obviously killing the player base off. What they simply could have done to improve this is kept most of the game modes from the previous game and added them into this newer game, adapting them to the different eras that are added and the different maps. So game modes such as Droid Run, Cargo, even Hero Hunt, that was a good game mode to play as well. They could have added those to play, so once they get bored of Galactic Assault, they could play Droid Run and Cargo, or any game mode like that. And once they're a bit bored of that, they can go back to Galactic Assault, which they will more than likely be happy to play once having a break from those different game modes. I feel like the game modes aren't the biggest issue in the game, because they are quite fun to play most of the time, but sometimes, this is just for me anyway, I fancy a break from these game modes and I want to play a fun mini game mode which involves a few less players, but just as much action packed fun. Another problem I do have with the game is with the heroes. The problem I have with the heroes is the fact that, for starters, they are locked, and the main two heroes of the previous game, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, cannot play. On screen I'm going to show you the heroes that are locked and the heroes that aren't locked and this list does include The Last Jedi with Finn and Captain Phasma added into it. But as you can see there are Palpatine, Chewbacca, Vader, Luke, Leia and I believe there is one more that is locked, Iden Verso. So at the end of the campaign you get 5,000 credits to unlock Iden Verso but a better way would be to just get Iden Verso straight off the bat once you completed the campaign instead of those credits probably going to be used in a sh progression system that is currently being used and I'll get onto that in just a moment. Another thing with the heroes is the health. The health is terrible, they feel incredibly weak. Joining a game and being a hero in the final stages of the game where you finally worked up enough points and you've beat everyone else to the count. You be a hero, you spawn in as a Jedi or a Sith Lord and you die to a basic heavy trooper. Now how does that make you feel? It makes you feel like a waste of time, it makes it pointless playing, and it devalues the heroes incredibly. But bear in mind these heroes are 8,000 or 6,000 battle points, which is not easy to get if you're the average player. To add to this, in the previous game you could be a hero for quite a while, making it actually mean something, because it actually felt special being able to plough through your ways, Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker, whereas in this game, you can literally die in seconds. Another thing that is seriously frustrating is the fact that Darth Maul cannot block. Granted his abilities he can get out of the situation quite quickly, it still doesn't change the fact that a Sith Lord of his calibre is unable to block a simple blast of fire. The fact of the matter is, he can only do the dodge 
that comes with the circle button, so you don't even need to use the block button, making it again easy to kill, especially due to the fact that the hero's health is quite low. Back to the game mode, heroes versus villains, it could be so much higher player count if the heroes weren't locked. The heroes being locked really limit the potential of this game mode, and I think the game mode could even move up to a 6 versus 6 once enough heroes are added into the game with the free DLC, but the fact that the heroes are locked is a bit of a joke. It may be a sense of pride and achievement according to EA and DICE, in reality it just limits the gameplay, and after a while, there being only the 5 game modes, it will get boring so playing as a hero, you won't really get an opportunity to do that. One more thing, why is Bosk the bounty hunter? A guy with less than one minute screen time in The Empire Strikes Back, a hero. He is not iconic, he doesn't deserve to be there. Why would you leave out people like Anakin, the main prequel trilogy character, or Obi-Wan, and if you're not including Jedi, Jango Fett, the infamous bounty hunter, the father, or the clone producer of Boba Fett. Even then, there are still other characters that you could easily add which would make more sense than Bosk. He is hardly iconic in any form or in any sense. It just doesn't make sense. This point is a very nitpicky and digging out of the barrel is the HUD. So the current HUD with the abilities like in the corner with the L1, R1 and the health bar with the battle points and even the kill feed is just a bit bland and quite boring to be honest. The previous game had a bit more of a bolder, more clearer, actual picture like and it actually looked quite nice compared to that. But that is just a little nitpicky thing. It does make the game look better despite being quite a specific thing to be picked out on. But let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Right, one more thing that really bugs me is the progression system. At the start of the game, there are microtransactions. And if that comes up again, that can be in a completely separate video because I could go on about how bad they are. But now, the star card system. The fact that star card systems are a way of ranking up your class setups is actually a disgusting way to level up. Previously, you were able to level up your rank, gain credits, and customize your character's guns, unlock star cards which actually affected your gameplay in a more balanced way, like with the L1 and R1 abilities compared to the upgraded shot damage or upgraded health or upgraded force power on the Jedi, or anything like that. Right now it makes the game so unbalanced, because if you're new to the game and you don't have these heroes unlocked either, don't have any of the required star cards that will even help you in the slightest. Granted, they don't always help, but it still causes the game to be unbalanced, which is quite frustrating. So say I joined on a new account, I didn't have anything, and I was new to the game, I would be at a major disadvantage for someone who's played since launch and then unlocked all the star cards and upgraded them. And then if they paid for the crystals to unlock the loot crate with instead of playing the game and getting credits, even then loot boxes, now seen as a former gambler in most a lot of countries now, including the UK which I'm even from, that puts into perspective how bad it is and the backlash that EA have got from it. The way I think the system should have worked is like last year, they didn't need to change it. You level up, you get credits, and then you're able to customise your character, your guns, and then there are hot contracts that you can do, which unlock you extra abilities on top of those, like the Bacta Bomb for example, or the Ion Distributor. That method was a much more sustainable and actually attractive way to keep players playing, because they actually feel a reward when they can unlock the Shadow Trooper for the Imperials or the Twi'lek for the Rebels. The fact that the pickup system has gone from being your basic infantry turret to having a star card where your turret is pretty much impenetrable and does maximum damage, it makes an unfair game. The way I think it should work is that you level up like last year, the exact same as last year, with the pickup system for all the other stuff like the, like the cannons and the turrets. With the battle points I think they should unlock the heroes and the heroes only, 
just to give it a bit more of a fair advantage rather than the pickup system for luck, rewarding the better players. And then vehicles should be open to use. With Battlefront, there's always a problem, and especially with EA, as EA keep running into trouble and being one of the most hated, if not the most hated, game developer in the entire world. One more little thing that really bugs me is the fact that I can't see basic statistics. For example, your game wins to loss ratio or your game is won on a certain game mode, I like to see where I'm at, what level I'm building myself at, and if I want to improve, I like to know where I need to improve on. Even if it includes getting kills with different class setups or different heroes or different ships for that matter, whether it means I'm not playing the objective enough and getting the kills at the same time, just little things like that, little details in the game that really improve the standard and give it a lot more ability to thrive. Although they've added three times the content, they've really taken away some of the key features and key aspects of the game that really made it fun in the first place, despite there not being a lot of content in the previous game. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe as I said at the start of the video, as it's always appreciated. Let me know what you don't like about the game in the comments down below, as I'll be really interested to know your views on the game. I know some of you won't agree with some of the things that I've said, but regardless, I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's been quite insightful to listen to. I'll be bringing a lot more videos this year, and I really hope you do enjoy them as I'll be putting extra effort into all of the videos that I upload this year. But yeah, my name's Bibrook, hopefully you did enjoy, and I'll see you in my next video.